Number one, condense the following expression into a single logarithm. So go ahead and try this problem. The first thing we need to do is move the coefficients to their exponent positions. So this is equivalent to log x to the third power minus log y to the fifth power plus log z raised to the two-thirds. So now we can write it as a single log expression. The logs that have a plus sign will go on the top. So x cubed and z to the two-thirds are going to go in the numerator of this fraction. This one is associated with a negative log, so y to the fifth is going to go on the bottom. And so that's how you can write it as a single log. And if you want to, you can write z to the two-thirds as the cube root of z squared. Number two, expand the following logarithmic expression into a sum or difference of logs. The first thing that we can do in this problem is we can move the 5 to the front. So this is going to be 5 log cube root of AB squared over C to the fourth. Now I'm going to rewrite this as 5 log. I'm going to change the cube root of AB squared. That's equivalent to a b squared raised to the one third and I'm going to distribute the one third so it's a to the one third b to the two thirds over c to the fourth so now we can expand into uh, multiple logs so it's going to be five log a to the one third plus log b to the two thirds and because c is on the bottom it's going to be negative log c to the fourth power now the last thing that we need to do is move the exponents uh, back and write them as coefficients. So it's 5 times 1 third log a plus 2 thirds log b minus 4 log c. So that's the answer and if we want to we could distribute the 5 but we don't have to. We could leave it like this. Number 3 what is the domain of the logarithmic function shown below? In order to find this, you can graph the function and then you can literally see what the domain is going to be. Another technique that you can use is you can set the inside portion of the log greater than zero. You cannot have a zero inside a log. Log of zero does not exist and log of a negative number does not exist. So only positive numbers can exist inside the log function. So now let's subtract both sides by 5. Negative x is greater than negative 5. Now if we divide both sides by negative 1, the inequality will change direction. So x is less than 5. If we plot this on a number line, we have an open circle at 5 and because x is less than 5 we're going to shade to the left. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to 5 but not including 5. Therefore B is the right answer to this problem. Number 4. What is the range of the exponential function shown below? This time we're going to go ahead and graph it. So let's take the exponent and we're going to set it equal to two things 0 and 1. So if we solve for x, x is going to be 3 and 4. So we're going to make our table based on those values, 3 and 4. Now, when x is equal to 3, what is the value of y? 3 minus 3 is 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And when x is equal to 4, 3 minus, I mean 4 minus 3 is 1. So we get 2 to the first power plus 1. That's 2 plus 1, that's 3. And then we have the horizontal asymptote, which is y is equal to 1. Now let's draw a rough sketch. So let's start with the horizontal asymptote. And 
and then we have the point 3 comma 2 which is here and 4 comma 3 so the graph is going to start from the horizontal asymptote and then it increases now the range has to do with the y values the lowest y value is the horizontal asymptote it's 1 and the highest is infinity but it doesn't include 1 so it's from 1 to infinity so A is the answer number 5 calculate the value of x in the equation shown below now if you recall log A plus log B can be combined into a single log by multiplying A and B and that's what we're gonna have to do in this problem so we're gonna have log base 2 and then we can multiply x plus 1 together with 5x plus 1 and all of that should equal 6 now let's convert this equation into its exponential form 2 raised to the 6th power is equal to the stuff inside and now let's go ahead and FOIL x plus 1 times 5x plus 1 x times x I mean x times 5x rather that's uh, 5x squared and then we have x times 1 which is simply x and then 1 times 5x and finally 1 times 1 2 to the 6th power that's equal to 64 x plus 5x is 6x and now let's subtract both sides by 64 so 0 is equal to 5x squared plus 6x minus 63 so what two numbers that multiply to the product of 5 times negative 63 adds up to 6 5 times 60 is 300 5 times 3 is 15 so this is negative 315 factors of 63 are 9 and 7 so we could try to divide negative 315 by 9 if we do that that will give us a uh, negative 35 factors of 9 are 3 and 3 so we have 5 3 3 and 7 so those are some prime numbers so we could use 7 and 3 which is 21 315 divided by 21 is 15 and these two differ by 6 so let's replace 6x with 21x and negative 15x now we could factor it now let's factor by grouping so let's take out the GCF in the first two terms let's reverse the order it might be easier to put the negative 15x with uh, 5x squared so now let's take out the GCF in the first two terms which is going to be 5x 5x squared divided by 5x is x negative 15x divided by 5x is negative 3 and we could take out a 7 from 21 and 63 so this is going to be actually we could take out a 21 and this is going to be x minus 3 21 times negative 3 is negative 63 so this is going to be x minus 3 times the stuff on the outside which is uh, 5x plus 21 so therefore we can see that x is equal to 3 and if we set 5x plus 21 equal to 0 x is going to be negative 21 over 5 so clearly the right answer is answer choice C number 6 what interest rate compounded quarterly is required to double an 8,000 investment in 10 years so let's write the equation a is equal to P 1 plus R over n raised to the nt so the initial investment is 8,000 and if we're going to double it we need it to turn into 16,000 our goal is to solve for r since it's compounding quarterly n is 4 and we want it to double in 10 years so t is 10 let's begin by dividing both sides by 8,000 16,000 divided by 8,000 that is equal to 2 
and 4 times 10 is 40. So to get rid of the parentheses on the right, we need to raise both sides to the reciprocal of 40, which is 1 over 40. 40 times 1 over 40 is 1, so these two will cancel. So the fourth root, or rather the 40th root of 2, is equal to 1 plus r over 4. If we subtract both sides by 1, we'll get this. And now to get r by itself, we need to multiply both sides by 4. So r is going to equal 4 times the 40th root of 2 minus 1. So as a decimal, r is 0 0.0699. And if we multiply it by 100%, this will give us 6.99%. So that is the interest rate that is needed in order to double the investment in 10 years. So B is the right answer if you round it to the nearest whole number. Number seven, which of the following is equivalent to the logarithmic expression shown below? So what we need to do is we need to split the log into two separate logs. Using this formula, log AB is equivalent to log A plus log B. So therefore log 16 times 32 is log 16 plus log 32. And log 9 times 27 is log 9 plus log 27. And we'll have to distribute the negative sign. So what is log base 2 of 16? 2 to the what power is 16? How many 2's do you have to multiply to get to 16? 2 to the 4th power is 16, so log base 2 of 16 is 4. You can also type in log 16 divided by log 2 in your calculator, and that will also give you 4. 2 to the 5th power is 32, and 3 squared is 9, so log base 3 of 9 is 2. Log base 3 of 27 is 3 because 3 to the 3rd power is 27. It takes 3 3's to get to 27. 4 plus 5 is 9. 2 plus 3 is 5. 9 minus 5 is 4. So therefore, D is the right answer. Number 8. Calculate the value of x in the equation shown below. So what we need to do is convert 1 over 16 and 64 into a common base such as 2 or 4. But I think 4 is easier. Now we know that 4 squared is equal to 16, which means that 4 raised to the negative 2 is 1 over 16. And also 4 cubed is 64. So let's replace 1 over 16 with 4 to the negative 2. And let's replace 64 with 4 to the third. Now whenever you have one exponent raised to another exponent, you can multiply the two exponents. So let's multiply negative 2 by 2x minus 3. And so that's going to be negative 4x plus 6. Now let's multiply 3 by 5x plus 1. So it's going to be 15x plus 3. Now, since the bases are equal to each other, the exponents must be equal to each other. So therefore, negative 4x plus 6 has to equal 15x plus 3. So let's add 4x to both sides, and let's subtract 3 from both sides. 6 minus 3 is 3, 15 plus 4 is 19. So therefore, x is equal to 3 over 19, and so that's the answer. Number 9, determine the value of x in the logarithmic equation shown below. So what we need to do is combine the two logs into a single log. Log a minus log b is equivalent to log a over log b. So let's go ahead and use that equation. So this is going to be log base 3. On top it's going to be 10x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. And that's going to equal 2. Now let's convert it into its exponential form. 3 to the second power is equal to what's inside.
Now 3 to the second power is 9. And what we need to, to do at this point is um, we need to cross multiply. So 9 times the stuff on the bottom, that's going to be 9x plus 9. And then 1 times the stuff on the top is 10x plus 1. So now let's subtract both sides by 9x and also by 1. So 10x minus 9x is x, 9 minus 1 is 8, so therefore x is equal to 8, which means that d is the right answer. Number 10, the half-life of element x is 8 days. How long will it take for 100 grams of element x to decay such that only 12.5 grams of element x remains? So there's two ways we're going to do this, conceptually and using an equation. So let's start with 100 grams of element X. The half-life is 8 days. The half-life is the time it takes for half the substance to decay, which means half is going to remain. So after 8 days, there's going to be 50 grams left over. After another 8 days, 25. And half of 25 is 12.5. So it takes 3 half-lives, or 8 times 3, which is 24 days, for element X to decay to a final amount of 12.5 grams. So 24 days is the answer. But now let's get the same answer using an equation. So let's use this equation. A is equal to PE raised to the RT. So first we need to find the value of R. So let's say the initial amount is 100. And the half-life is 8 days. So in 8 days, the final amount is going to be half of 100. It's going to be 50. So let's calculate R. If we divide both sides by 100, 50 divided by 100 is 0.5. So 0.5 is equal to E raised to the 8R. So now let's take the natural log of both sides. This will allow us to take the exponent and move it to the front. So ln of 0.5 is equal to 8R ln E. The natural log of E is 1, and so R is going to be ln 0.5 divided by 8. So R is negative 0 0.086643. So now that we have that, let's go and find out how long it's going to take to decay to a final amount of 12.5. So A, the final amount, is 12.5, P is 100, R is negative 0 0.086643, and our goal is to find the value of T. So let's divide both sides by 100. So 12.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.215, and so it's equal to this. Now let's go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. And then let's move the exponent to the front. So the natural log of 0.125 is equal to negative 0 0.086643t ln e. And ln e is 1. So t is equal to ln 0.125 over negative 0 0.086643. So let's go ahead and type that in. So this will give you 24.0001, which we could just round it to 24. So that's how you can get the answer using the uh, compound and continuous equation. Or you can just uh, figure it out conceptually. But sometimes you may not have a perfect number like 12.5, because 12.5 is half of 25, which is half of 50, which is half of 100. They may give you a number like 9.6 or 11.4. In which case, you can estimate it using uh, the, the first method, but if you want to find the exact answer, use the equation as uh, we've used it in this problem.